It's magic. So calories don't matter. You're losing weight with magic. So why would we even have this conversation? Of course, calories matter. But let's fill in the blanks on this so that you're not just left hanging. All right, with fasting, calories do matter. But it all depends on how many calories you're consuming and how much you're depriving yourself and what you're actually after. Hey, please do make sure you hit that red subscribe button down there in the bottom right corner, and then please hit that bell icon for daily videos so you never ever miss a beat and never miss our live broadcast as well. Then after this video, if you don't mind, check out Thrive Market down below in the description. Thrive Market's an online grocery delivery company. They're awesome. So they're an online marketplace. So all your keto goods, your fasting goods, anything that you can think of in the all like health and wellness category, you can generally get through Thrive. So it's delivered right to your doorstep. They're a big supporter of this channel and there are special links down below for you to check them out and get groceries delivered right to your doorstep. Look at, remember that with fasting, the goal is to induce metabolic changes. The goal, although it is part of the whole situation, the goal is not to just restrict calories. There is a solid argument that people could make that says that, well, people that intermittent fast just lose weight because calories are being restricted. Well, yes, of course, calories are being restricted, but the window in which calories are being restricted plays a very big role. Now I'm gonna spare you the gory details and going into a lot of biochemistry with this, and I'm gonna keep it just simple and conceptual so that you can think outside the box for a minute. Okay, if right now I were to consume just, I don't know, one bite of spaghetti, technically I wouldn't be fasting, right? Or technically I would be in a caloric surplus, actually, because I'm probably not gonna burn all 25 calories from this big honk and bite of spaghetti in one the nanosecond, right? The second that I'm eating it, I'm in a caloric surplus. Well, that same argument goes for if I go two minutes without eating, am I technically in a deficit at that very second in time? So the question of deficit and surplus, I feel is somewhat irrelevant when it comes down to fasting. Okay, there's some interesting science that shows that during a fast, during the actual fast, there's a short period of time in which the metabolism increases. Okay, actually, British Journal of Nutrition published this. They show that in a 72-hour fast, in people that aren't adapted to fasting, they actually had an increase in their metabolic rate, probably because their body was having a heightened adrenaline response to try to find food. Okay, so this means that because you're fasting, maybe you're burning more calories at rest than you would if you were just simply reducing calories through and through, right? If you were continually, gradually reducing calories. Calories absolutely matter, but the time period in which you have them matters too, okay? So if you're doing a 16 hour fast and you have an eight hour eating window, if you do not eat enough calories within that eight hour eating window, there's a very good chance that you're going to lose weight and there's a very good chance that your metabolism will slow down via adaptive thermogenesis to adapt to the amount of calories that you take in. So a question that comes up a lot is, if I eat enough calories to maintain, okay, during my eating period, can I continue fasting as a lifestyle and not slow down my metabolism? The short answer is probably, because that's where calories in, calories out, and the simple equation along with your metabolism probably does come into play. But I would probably make the solid argument that you would have better success with losing weight. Can people debunk me on this? Absolutely. Cue all the YouTube videos to hate Thomas DeLauer. Here's the thing. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video. The goal with fasting is not to just restrict calories, is to drive metabolic change, to drive your body to be able to know how to utilize other fuel substrates so that a calorie that is supposed to just be a calorie is not necessarily just a calorie, right? So that for every minute that you're not eating in a fat-adapted, fasting-adapted individual, you're potentially burning more of the right energy substrate than someone from another side of the equation. Okay, so calories matter, and you should do everything that you can to get to your goal baseline level of calories during your eating window. But remember, I really don't care what you have to do to get there, as long as it's within healthy reason, as long as your fasting period is appropriate, and as long as your fasting period is strict. There was a study that was published in the journal Obesity, and I talked about this in a recent video, okay, that looked at the Biggest Loser uh, participants. People that were participating in the Biggest Loser had lost a bunch of weight. Okay, they went through severe, severe caloric deprivation along with intense exercise. Probably had a pretty dramatic shift in their metabolism. Well, they contacted them and got in touch with them six years later, 
and they found that their overall metabolic rate had decreased by 700 calories per day and had stayed there even six years later. Okay, so when we just reduce calories over time, the body is going to find a way to adapt to that. It's going to have adaptive thermogenesis and it's going to slow our metabolism down. Okay, and this happens whether you are fasting and not eating enough calories, or it happens if you are just gradually reducing calories to the point where you're not consuming calories. Okay, that's all the same. But what's different with people that fast is their body has a way to utilize the fat that's stored a lot more efficiently, thereby not breaking down protein as much when they do go into a deficit, therefore leaving their resting metabolic rate potentially higher because their body knows how to use the fat and preserve the muscle, which is a large, large, large driver of our metabolism. So I don't want to go long-winded on this. Get your calories in. Try not to have more than a 10% reduction in your baseline calories for weight loss. Okay, if you're trying to lose weight, a 10% reduction is great. If you're normally consuming 2,000 calories a day and you want to lose weight, drop it down by 10%. So drop it down to 1,800 calories per day just within your eating window. Calories still matter, but not the way that some of these internet people want to make you think. I'll see you tomorrow.